Well, 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 I'm here for the nonprofit five minute challenge. Now, I think maybe, just maybe, there might be something backstage where they're going to be, I don't know, doing a food challenge or something like that. That's what I'm used to. But I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. So I'm going to introduce the panel. They're going to come on out, and I'm going to tell you what this five minute challenge is all about. So first up, we have Sean Witzel from Southern Word, Stephen Cade from Giving Guitars, Cindy Montana from Nashville Peacemakers, and Sharon Robertson, w YWCA, Nashville and Middle Tennessee. So, I don't know what to say here. It's a, it's a game sort of thing. You guys got to go up there. You're going to have five minutes on the clock. Oh. Yes, you're going to have five minutes on the clock. You're going to say who you are, what you do, why you need some help. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Sounds good? Okay. Sounds, Sounds great. Up first, let's try Stephen Cade from wow. Giving Guitars. Why All not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Stephen Cade. Great to be here with you all. Uh, I was thankful to be able to perform earlier today. Um, I've got my lovely wife and my two kids here with me, uh, Levi and Eliana. And um, yeah, born and raised in Houston, Texas. I've been an artist for some time now and uh, just have always wanted to use my artist career to give back. And uh, I was performing in Brentwood, Tennessee, there was a gentleman there that owned the house, and um, it was an amazing day. He had a guitar pool and a wall twice as high as this ceiling full of guitars, and I thought, this is an interesting guy. So um, I, I started performing, and he said, um, you know, I, I could see your heart. You bring your family. Uh, there's something about you. Why don't you go ahead, and his name was Brent Yates, who knows about the power of giving, by the way. Um, in his own right. Uh, he did great things. He owned uh, the Mid-Ohio Pipeline, sold that, and became uh, very wealthy and as a philanthropist, author, and investor. So uh, just God put us together, and it was the right time, right place. He said, why don't you go ahead and pray about what you can do to help others, to help others. So my wife and I were talking about it. She's like, well, what about instruments for inspiration? I said, I love that. So we started giving guitars, and um, 16 months ago, we went to our first uh, homeless shelter in uh, Austin, Texas, and it was um, right there called the Rathgaber Center, and we brought a guitar to these families, and I performed a couple of songs, and since then, we have been to 63 uh, homeless shelters across 14 states, donated over 100 guitars, also partnered with some of these organizations for uh, events to raise over $200,000 for them, uh, and it has been a whirlwind. So my first job is, it, it, for some of you, you saw me saying earlier, uh, that, is my, that is how I, I pay the bills, um, and, and God is good like that. And I put a tip jar out, and I just say, hey, you know, we're, we're on this mission, and we hope that you get to be a part of it. And our goal is to reach as many um, shelters as possible, inspiring these kids, these families, uh, to you know, to really know that music is a force for good, and that they can utilize music as a modality, as a treatment. It's just like equine therapy is a treatment. Um, so we are excited about what the future holds. Um, there are ways to get involved by going to our website, uh, givingguitars.org, and you will find videos, um, lots of different uh, press clippings, and ways to, of course, donate. Um, send us a message if you're interested in volunteering or hosting uh, an event. Uh, we, would, we would love to be a part of that. We also go out to different uh, charities like even cancer foundations. Um, I was just in Phoenix, Arizona, donating a guitar to the Singleton Cancer Research, which supports families that are um, single family parents that are going through struggles of cancer. And so we go in and we donate a guitar to raise money for that organization as well, as well as touching veterans and whatnot. So we're just using music and guitars as a, like I said, a, a, just a force for good and doing great things with it. So we hope that you guys will uh, help, help us 
create more uh, events and get to more shelters. There are 11,000 shelters in the, in the uh, United States of America. Just to throw a, a couple numbers out at you, um, 1,500 kids are homeless in Chattanooga right now as we speak and sit here. There's 1,500 kids that are homeless that don't have a place to sleep. Um, in Georgia, kids are sleeping in DHS offices. Um, how do I know all this? Because I've been to 63 homeless shelters. I tour the facility. I meet the residents. Um, we promote it. And uh, we, we just try to keep bringing hope in. So there's a lot of need out there. And you've heard that today through the, through the panelists that there's quite a bit of need. So we just ask that you guys, uh, you know, pray into how that you could, you know, how you can possibly, um, you know, participate with us. Uh, we're believers. We believe that Jesus has given us the strength and the power and the ability to get out there and make a difference. So we'd love to have you involved with us on that. What's your biggest challenge? Uh, biggest challenge is just really um, getting people to participate and, and really just utilizing their strengths, their talents, their time, their talent, their resources to come along and help us grow this larger. So we, we'd appreciate that very much. Thank you very much. Let's go here with um, Sean Witzel from Southern Word. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Sean Witzel from Southern Word. Southern Word is a really cool nonprofit organization that is focused on youth development. And we do that through the powerful tool of spoken word. So we place writer mentors in schools, primarily English classes, and we use spoken word poetry as an opportunity to give students the, the opportunity to write about their lives. They're often writing about and discussing and processing things they normally would not even touch or they not, wouldn't share with other people. It gives them opportunity to do that. So there's a social emotional learning component to, to that as well. It's an opportunity to, to bring communities together because young people are getting to know the things that they have in common or the struggles, experiences they have in common with the person sitting next to them that they probably would have not even known about had it not been for our workshop. And we're also enforcing those things they're learning through in their English classes anyway, literary devices that help make them stronger writers. And we're there not, not to turn them into poets. You know, some of them learn that they have an interest or an ability to write poetry, and that's great, and they continue on with the organization. But our idea is to make them better, more effective communicators so that they can go on any stage before any audience and to speak their truth. They're writing about their experiences, they're writing about their lives, but they're also writing about the world, the things that they see wrong in society and the, and the changes they want to make so that this world is better. And so that's how we empower youth. That's how we transform young people and who will go on to transform themselves and other young people around them and to transform the world. At Southern Word, we have cool events that we do. We do poetry slams in the community, but we have this, this event called Untable. It's Untabled. It's an annual event where we bring business leaders, um, entrepreneurs, et cetera, together to kind of experience what we do and what we do in the classroom and see how they can be a part of the solution, how they can help us to put more writing mentors in English classes and in the community. We also have a program called Remixing Community, which is a DEI um, D diversity, equity, and inclusion workshop that I help develop, that I facilitate. And we use poetry, we use um, visual arts and conversation where these corp people in corporations can talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, or the lack thereof, and how they share their experiences, and, and we come up with solutions for helping to create more diverse, more equitable, more inclusive spaces in corporate America. And so that's what we're doing. That's just some of what we're doing in Southern Word. Again, these young people need this outlet. They need this opportunity to speak truth to power. They need this opportunity to process what it is that they're experiencing in their lives, and they need the opportunity to, to be to grow in their communication skills. And that's what we at Southern Word are here to do, changing lives one word at a time. So thank you very much. What's your biggest challenge? 
I think our biggest challenge, we have a lot of enthusiasm around Southern Word. The people who know us know what we do and how effective we are. I think our biggest challenge is just spreading, getting more people to understand the importance of what it is that we do. And, and knowing that it's not just, these are not just gifted students who are, um, they just happen to be gifted, even though some people have certain gifts that are natural to them, but we are developing young people. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's super important. So we need the support to continue doing the work. So just like with a lot of nonprofits, money is super important and having the resources to be able to continue doing what we're doing. And you can visit us at southernword.org. We're on all the socials as well. Thank you very much. So we're going to go down to Cindy Montana, uh, Nashville Peacemakers. Mm -hmm. Cindy. Hi. I'm Cindy Montano, and I'm with Nashville Peacemakers. Nashville Peacemakers is a grassroots nonprofit organization that was founded by my favorite rock star named Clemmy Greenlee. If y'all have not ever heard the name Clemmy Greenlee, I encourage you to Google it because I only got four minutes and 40 seconds left. And <laughs> it took a lot longer than that to tell her story. Um, Nashville Peacemakers, our mission is to work with youth in disadvantaged neighborhoods, equipping them with life skills and the self-worth necessary to make choices alternative to violence and then also supporting the mother and the parents whose child has been victimized by, by violence. Okay, that's the official mission statement. My elevator pitch is that we are working to end the cycle of violence one person, one child, one family at a time. How do we do that? We do that through our three pillar programs. Back to Basics, which is a youth mentoring program for young ladies. Uh, Straight Talk, which is a youth mentoring program for young men. And then Mothers Over Murder, shortened to Moms, which is a grief support and justice action group for women who have lost a child to violence. That might be gun violence, that might be suicide, that might be a fentanyl overdose, any type of violence that has robbed a parent of their child. This group exists because after the funeral is done and the food's all gone and that phone starts, stops ringing, that mother is left to grieve. And often there are other <coughs> children present in that home. So there's not just one child lost, there's the potential for other children to be lost. So when we say we're working one person, one child, one family at a time, we make a real effort to get children across our program. So you might have sisters who are in Back to Basics and their brother or cousin is in Straight Talk and they've got a mom that's in Mothers Over Murder. Um, We, 2023 marks our 20th year of promoting peace through unconditional love. And we we don't toss around unconditional love loosely. It is a real (coughs) thing within our organization. See, Clemmy is this, she's shorter than me. (laughs) So that's saying something. And this woman is so full of love. And what I've experienced in life is that whatever people are full of, when you come up against them, that's what's going to spill on you. Okay, so I hung out with Clemmy long enough that I became saturated with her unconditional love, and I needed to share that. So um, when I met Clemmy, it was at the film festival in 2005, And it was one of those experiences where, before I left, I told her, I know that I know that I know that I've met you for a reason, and I don't know why. Two years later, our paths did cross again. And I needed help with a documentary I was doing on homelessness in Nashville. And I called up the Nashville Homeless Power Project, and there was only, she answered the phone, hello, Clemmy Greenlee. And I'm like, there can be only one. And so I met with her, told her what I wanted to do, She agreed to help me, and her brother Lonnie, who was with us at the meeting, said, Clemmy's agreed to help you. What are you going to do for her? (laughs) And I just looked at her, and I said, what do you need? And I have literally been her what-do-you-need person since 2008. Started out, taught myself to write code, 
so I could fix her website. And um, together, Clemmy is the heart, the soul, and the face yeah. of the organization. And I stand behind her as her hands and feet. And together, we have taken this little tiny loaves and fishes grassroots organization where we used to do pop-ups on street corners in East Nashville and North Nashville. Um, and Clemmy would give out hot dogs and bottled water and talk to the kids and talk to the families and, you know, just be present in the neighborhood. That was in 2008. In 2023, we have grown into, we're growing up. We're becoming a, a big boy grassroots organization. And, um, oh my gosh, we only, I only have 10 seconds. So 2023 <laughs> is our... Is our 20th anniversary, our greatest need right now, because we have grown from this little tabletop to a bigger organization, is we need IT, um, we, we, we need um, IT implement, identification and implementation. We need better platforms for running the organization. We need a, um, a, uh, a development person to help us to grow to the next level, and we need a building. So those are our greatest needs and our greatest challenges right now, and we have gotten there one piece at a time. We've been eating this elephant for 20 years, and with your help, we can take it home. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And uh, finally, we have Sharon, the YWCA Natural in Middle yes. Tennessee. Yes, You're thank up. you, thank you. I'll start with our mission statement, because if you believe in the mission statement I am about to recite, you will have a place in the YWCA family. The YWCA's mission is eliminating racism. We empower women. We promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. And as I started, if you believe in that mission statement, because I always say mission first, you have a place with the YWCA. You might ask me, how do we go about fulfilling such a grand mission? And we do it one step at a time. Our largest program by far are our domestic violence services. Now, it's unfortunate that this is an issue that has only grown. However, what we do know, it is women are empowered. If we understand that women of color are more likely to be victims of violence and have less resources, if we understand that every woman deserves peace, justice, and freedom and dignity, then you will understand why we put a significant focus on domestic violence. We also get ahead of the program. We do believe that both girls and boys need to understand one healthy masculinity, but also young girls need to understand that they can be strong, smart, and bold. That's why we are also a Girls Inc. affiliate, because we want those girls to step into this world and understand that they too have value, that they are more than an Instagram model, that they are more than just a dance routine that they have dignity and they have equity and they, have, they need our support. We also know our young men need support. They need to understand that there's a value in this world for a healthy man and they need to understand what healthy masculinity means because that's the other side of the equation because most batterers in our community are men and men have to own that and men have to support other men that choose to make this a better society. We are a Dress for Success affiliate. And what this means is we take women that need someone to help them understand that they are just not someone that is destined to, let's say, work in a restaurant. That's fine, but what if they want to own the restaurant? We're gonna give them those skill sets. We're gonna give them clothing. We're gonna give them career counseling. And we're gonna give them mentorship so they'll say, I star in the kitchen. I have my own restaurant. We also have a learning center because education is a lifelong commodity. 
Once you are educated, people can't take that away from you. And that's why people fight so hard to keep education. Because you educate a woman, you don't have to worry about the rest. Because she'll be able to do everything she needs to do to make herself powerful. And of course, we're advocates. If people could understand how they need to be reflective of their own self, look in the mirror. What are you not doing to eliminate racism in your own life and in your society? It's more than just saying, well, I would never do that. You have to step into that space to be an anti-racist. So, as I said at the start, if you really believe in our mission statement, if you really believe that we as a community can tackle the hard issues of racism, sexism, homophobism, whatever you want to do, then you have a place at the YW. YWCANashville.com, plenty of opportunities for any sort of, any way that you want to volunteer, we have that for you. And we welcome everyone. And we welcome you to educate the community and so you can be an ally in this fight. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we have four uh, fantastic nonprofits um, that we should put our resources behind. We should give our time. Because mm -hmm. if you can't get the resources, you can give the time. So I thank you guys for uh, coming up here. Um, Southern Maid, giving guitars. National Peacemakers and YWCA. Thank I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So next, JB sits down with a team of live event professionals to talk about how they all came together to support each other during the height of the pandemic.